Okay, so yesterday we filled in the details of these three methods that we had not filled in the details the day before. What happens when you click the mouse? What happens when you roll the mouse wheel? And what happens when you drag the mouse? And all three of these methods will make a call to a built-in method called paint. Paint is built into the JFrame class of which we are instantiating, or sorry, inheriting from. So paint is already part of that. Paint essentially is a way to redraw the JFrame itself. So we did that yesterday and we incorporated just some basic logic into that. But some of the things we did, for example, in mouse move, is we then incorporated our X and Y values and we used, for example, something called the mouse event object. And we got the X and the Y from that. Same with mouse wheel. In the mouse wheel method, we used something called get wheel rotation to determine which direction the wheel was spinning. And we figured out that that used integers to do that. And a lot of using graphical objects is figuring out what other programmers' methods do. And luckily, Interfaces like C Sharp, or pardon me, like uh, NetBeans and Eclipse, often have built into them easy ways to read the Java documentation. So as I'm looking at wheel rotation, I can know, oh, whoops, that returns an integer wheel rotation. And as well, I can see that, oh, here's what it does. I can actually read the Java documentation on the fly. That's handy. It doesn't require me to like, go on the internet and looking it up. Same with mouse click. With mouse click, we used the get button, we used button three, button two. We made use of something called the J color chooser. I didn't spend too much time on this yesterday, but J color chooser was basically something like J option pane in the sense that it's going to display a nice dialog box for us. It just so happens that this dialog box focuses on colors. Since we were doing dialogues, we also built a class called dialogues and threw in there a method called choice. So again, what I was trying to demonstrate there is, now that you know about classes, you can also um, use that to your advantage to build stuff into the classes. So we built that in there and we made that method what's called a static method so that we didn't have to instantiate the class to use it. By the way, I've modified the code since yesterday in there a little bit. If you go into the notes, you can read that. This is a little bit better code than what I put in there yesterday because it doesn't have the option of crashing potentially that way. So anyways, I'm not going to go through the detail. If you feel you want to update that method a little bit, you can go into my notes to find that later. I just want to get rolling today. So where we left off yesterday was here in the paint method and we were writing code for this method called paints. Now, first and foremost, there's a slight change from yesterday. We had two lines in there, one that said this.setBackground. I'd actually like you to remove that line. So really, you should only have these three lines. There's a bit of a bug with that one line. So all I'm going to suggest is set the foreground of this. This is the JFrame. And then the other two lines sets the foreground and the background of this dot get content pane, which is the container object inside of the J frame. So it's setting the foreground of the background to this particular color inside the container inside of this J frame. It's a bit of a, it's a bit sort of multi action happening here. If you think back to our previous graphics examples, we made a container object, we coded that in, and then did it that way. There's nothing wrong with any of that, okay? All of that can, can happen. Okay, so now let's add code to this. So now that I kind of cleared a lot of that up, what we need to do now is determine our user's choice. So we're going to use an if statement for that. If choice, whoops, ah. And choice is a string, so dot equals. And what we're going to figure out what they chose is by looking at our brushes. 
and spot zero in our brushes. So if they chose spot zero in the brushes, we're going to draw something specific. So I'm just going to, you guys don't need to do this, but I'm just going to go up here and steal what the brushes are. So I'm just going to copy that just so we have it as a reference down here. And uh, paste that in there and just quickly turn that into a comment just so we, we know. So choice zero is the filled oval. That was the first thing that we said our first brush would be. So here's how we draw that on the screen. We draw a filled oval by using our parameter graphics. Graphics is something built into paint for the purpose of drawing graphics. So we're going to say graphics dots and built into this graphics object is a ton of methods for doing all kinds of stuff. Some of them draw images on the screen. Some of them draw directly on the screen including things like ovals, which is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to call a method called fill oval. And you can see that fill oval requires four parameters. An X, a Y, which would determine where it's drawing the oval, a width, and a height, which obviously determines the size of the oval. So we talked a little bit about graphics last year, even in grade 10. If you think about a screen, or in this case, the container, which is the J-frame. We're about to draw an oval on that particular J-frame. So the first thing I need is some sort of X value along the X coordinate. And then I need a Y value along the Y coordinate. We already have those two things. We already have our X and Y. They're global variables. So that's going to be easy. We got the global variables from the mouse. So it's wherever the mouse is currently dragging. So let's say the XY is right here. This spot right here is the XY I'm talking about. Okay, so that's the first thing I need. Now I need, I need a width to draw this thing and a height to draw this thing. So if I've got the XY, if I've got the spot and I've got the width and the height, I've got everything I need. So I essentially have a rectangle shape for which I can draw an oval inside of it. And I'm going to fill in that oval. What color will I fill it in with? Well, my foreground color. That's what foreground was for. So I've already got the foreground color set. I'm going to draw that oval right now. So here's what I would suggest. If we did this right now, as is, with x, y, it's going to draw it in a weird way. Think about it. This is where my mouse would be. My mouse, I'm going to try and draw a mouse cursor right there. That's what the mouse cursor would look like. Is that the way you'd expect the oval to be drawn? No. I would expect the oval to maybe be drawn more like this, in the center of where the mouse is clicking. So let's adjust our code slightly to do that. It's just a little bit of math. I just want to, whoa, somebody's watching us. Um, I'm just going to show you what I mean by that. So fill oval, x, y is not quite right. What we want to put for x is x minus bracket size divided by 2. Because that's what the x actually is. It's half of the size back from x. And same with y. y size minus 2. Or sorry, divided by 2. And it's not this. It's size, and it's not count, it's size. That's the use of the method call right there. Is the choice equals x minus size divided by 2, y minus size divided by 2. Let's test that. That should work for brush 0. I'll run my code. And was brushes zero the default brush? I believe it was. I believe in our set defaults method, we made brush zero the default brush. So here's my screen, and I click and drag. And as you can see, it's drawing an oval. And I'm going to make it bigger. You can see there. And drag. So you can see there, the mouse is now drawing the oval in the center. 
And because we made it size by size, it's going to be a perfect circle. You could right click and change the background color. You could double click and set the foreground color. And you can drag and draw. Remember, scrolling the mouse makes things bigger or smaller. Pretty cool. Okay, so that was choice zero. Just one sec. 